But since the virus is very difficult to detect, because there is no even a, a very good uh, laboratory diagnosis, because it's only a, a short period window uh, to diagnose five days. After five or six days, it's impossible to detect the virus in, in blood. And this is the reason most of the reported cases are, are, are not confirmed uh, in the region. But we can assume with good history, if we find three or four of the symptoms like conjunctivitis, rash, uh, um, uh, and pain in the, in the bones, that is Zika. A point in doctors, if, we, if, if they don't think about Zika, think about dengue fever, because dengue fever is the one that has a high mortality. And at the end of the day, Zika, dengue fever, and chikungunya are transmitted by mosquitoes. The region has a, a good experience with these diseases because uh, three years ago in 2013, we have an outbreak of chikungunya, 1.1 million cases in the region. And last year, we have 600,000 cases of chikungunya and 2.7 million cases of dengue fever. So the key issue here is why so many countries even though, and when I speak about minimizing the impact, we should not panic, we should not be afraid, but we need to try to have aggressive vector control in those countries, because the problem here is two things. One, the mosquito was never exposed to this virus also, and the population of the Americas was also never exposed, so didn't have immunity. So everyone is at risk. And if we assume that everyone is at risk, we can expect uh, some couple of three or four million cases of Zika virus disease. The good positive note is that it's not, uh, it is a mild disease. Many people don't even go to the health systems because they take anti-analgesic or, or painkillers and it, it gets confused with virosis or something like that. The complications is the problem, the might potentially association with microcephaly in Guillain-Barre, and that's where the health system needs to be prepared to absorb this, uh, an influx of potential complicated 